Thank you. Uh, this is going to be the quickest Q&A panel in Comic-Con history, as we are, have a hard out time of here at 5.55, and I think that's about eight minutes from now. Uh, didn't get a chance to introduce her before, but Amy Mata is with us now. Thanks for being here, Amy. And, uh, she flew in from Boston this morning. Like, Just for a few me. hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> into LAX. Yeah. So, floor's open to you. Any questions? Any. Uh, thoughts? <laughs> Concerns? So, I, I mean, yes. how did you come up with. My assumption is in loving memory of you know, the three dudes in there. Yes. Um, so, my assumption is that you got the idea based off of personal history from your grandfather, your grandfather? Yes, so my dad sent me a photo of my grandfather and uh, he actually discovered some of those old, old, those grainy photos and it's the 100 year anniversary of World War One. I. I wanted to do something to commemorate my family and their involvement in the war and uh, I just started to think what, what would they think of my life 100 years in the future living in LA and all of the technology and all the advances would they actually even think that we were that advanced? Would they, how, you know, and when you look back at the World, at World War I, you see these grainy images of these, these brave men running over the trenches into their, into their doom. And I wanted to find a way of bridging that gap between the present day and the black and white and bring some color and some, some bring those, those men into, into focus in the present day. To follow up on that, and yet at the same time, your character, what well, didn't seem, he, he didn't look at everything, everything and go, oh my god, I've never seen this, this is a miracle. You kind of played that down for a bit. What was, on the one hand, you wanted to show that miraculous point of view, on the other hand, you played it down, what was the thinking? Yeah, we, we talked about that quite a bit, you know, to what extent should Alistair sort of geek out over, you know, iPhones and stuff like that. And I think the film is so grounded that um, we didn't want to make too much of him having like a sort of ooh, ah thing because he, he's very serious and his stakes are so high, he, is, he has a one track mind, how to get back. Um, so, I mean, we, we did talk about that, but I, I mean, I think that we did, did it with like a really light touch with him just sort of being a little bit tentative with the computers and stuff, and then he's got that one little exchange with Brandon where he essentially says, we have radio, so what's the big whoop? But. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd been there for a bit by the time you found it, so he'd already had to try to survive and kind of figure out that he was in this bizarre, crazy That's a good point. For 30 days in LA, I guess yeah. he's been seeing people walking like that, so, yeah. or driving like that. <laughs> Yeah, the acting was excellent, so I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the light touch when it came to the you know, electronics and all that kind of stuff. So how long did it take you for like production and then filming and then editing? I need to answer a question. Do you know the answer yet? I don't know the full answer. I mean, the filming t seemed um, pretty concise. I know it was spread out over a, a bit of time, but this is pr producer extraordinaire. Like everything is figured out and it just seemed so organized and so, I didn't feel like there was a lot of wasted time within the time that we had. There was virtually no wasted time. I was so grateful to get who, you know, who we had, Amy and Annie, that I just didn't want to waste any of their time. So what I would do is uh, I would, we, we would schedule a few shoot days, and then I would go back to work, raise the finances, and it's all <laughs> self-funded by my, my day job. I call it a job starter campaign. It's different to Kickstarter. It's you go and you get a job. And then you save up, <laughs> and then you pay for it. <laughs> um, in answer to your question, two and a half years from start to finish editing and all in, that's because we, we took our time with it. Yeah, and the funny thing is, I've never made a film, so a guy kept saying, Annie, I know this is taking forever, you know? And I'd say, I don't, I guess so. I mean, I have really nothing to compare it to, so. But there were some funny continuity issues over yeah. filming it over such a, such a long period of time, like, you know, my hair would grow, or Tom would play Brandon would lose weight, and we'd be like, oh no, you know, what are we gonna do, it's not gonna match, and 
um, the, you know, staring at the footage and what dishes were in my sink and trying to make sure the continuity was all <laughs> there. It was really a lot of hours of staring the books on my bookshelves. <laughs> yeah, so Tom, uh, just quick story about Tommy, this is his first uh, movie back after a major spinal surgery, broke his back, so this is his first acting job after that, and so he'd been sitting in a hospital bed for months, put on a, a lot of weight, and then as we went through the filming, he gradually lost weight as he got fitter and he got more mobility, and we just kept trying to fatten him out. Lots of butterfingers and crabs. <laughs> and then he came up with this whole backstory that he his character was so bereft that Poppy had like ignored him completely that he stopped eating altogether and just like became emaciated. <laughs> Thank you so much, thank you. And it's interesting in looking at the, the history of World War I that you know, when, when Alistair joined the war in 1916, the, the character, uh, there, weren't, there were not as many young people around anymore. So the, the draft got, kept getting older and older and older into the 30s. So all of these uh, you know, accountants and librarians, they were getting drafted at that point in the war. So, yeah, and it was a clever idea that worked on a few levels. I mean, it, it enables him to get a job that um, is easy to sort of script. You know, he becomes a blogger, basically, which is kind of, it's both funny, but it's also, I mean, he doesn't, uh, well, I guess he's working at the, the dishwashing place, too. He gets two jobs. But, um, but yeah, and then also I think that that's one thing that Poppy really responds to, and I mean, he seems educated, and he seems, you know, she can't quite put her finger on who is this guy. She doesn't believe he's who he says he is, but he's something. He's He's educated, he's got a family somewhere. So, um, you might have gotten over this in, in the beginning of this part of it, but uh, what's your goal for the film? Do you want to submit the film fast? Are you already on the timeline? Will you, is this the first time showing it, or? This is the world premiere. <laughs> <laughs> And the film is actually being released tonight on Vimeo, and so when you go to alistair1918.com, you can rent it, and so you can tell your friends, perhaps, if you enjoyed it, <laughs> let them know, please. But yeah, that's, that's the goal, just get, get it out. We may even have a couple of screenings in New York. I'm, I'm from New York, and just sort of friends and family screenings, and there's a few people in LA who want to have screenings uh, around town. All of our friends are like, where can we see it? So. You know, Comic Con and then and then everywhere else. People's living rooms, I guess. Uh, I thought the first person uh, perspective by uh, using the uh, doc uh, documentary form format and the way you were cleverly able to uh, enter uh, the link the camera shots to make continuity, uh, that was really good. That was well done. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. That's that's a lot of our editor, and yeah. I would really fall in love with those beautiful shots on the 7D, and then be like, can we use that one? You know, but <laughs> we wanted to mix it, and the idea of the multiple cameras was Guy's idea. All told, I think we used eight. I think that between the iPad, the GoPro, um, all the various cameras, um, the laptops. Yeah, eight different types of cameras, and it was kind of taking a leap. We which the majority of it was shot in 2014 before some contemporary vloggers, the Casey Neistats had started vlogging. He started back in early 2015. So we just kind of had a conversation about it and we thought it was going to, to, to blow up and it was going to become popular. So that paid off, <laughs> didn't it? Or else we wouldn't be able to, you know, to handle the in and out of focus and all of that stuff. But I think just collectively over the past couple of years, the viewing audience is able to watch a lot of different mixtures of footage styles 
and they're a lot more open to it just based on watching so much internet, internet content. Amy. Well, I've done, I've been work. yeah, I've done some television, some, some other independent film. Yeah, just, you know, keep on keeping on. <laughs> so, Amy, so you've done Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. I have. Yeah. yeah. Mad Men. Yes. Been in. And. I just did a pilot where I make out with a 21 year old. <laughs> that was no big deal. <laughs> Do you have a French accent in that one? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't. Uh, I started uh, acting, uh, came to LA as a musician, and then transferred to acting when I no longer wanted to lug my amplifier around. That was about 10 years ago, and I immediately uh, <coughs> studied at Howard Fine Acting Studio. I got two roles in feature films back to back as a lead actor. And I thought, that's it, I've made it. Yeah. And then six months later, I was uh, sweeping up cigarette butts on the floor of a bar, and I thought, you know, this is the business. This is going to be my yes. life. And I, I love to make. I love to make things. I want to. I love to create things and bring people together. So I decided then to stop auditioning, to you know, to start this learning how to make films. I made a lot of short films. Done a lot of film festivals. This is my first feature film, but it's sort of been a ten-year process of, of just figuring out how to do this, and uh, and and also convince other other talented people to come along and do it with me. Um, my background is in theater directing. I studied directing and acting at NYU, but I haven't acted in so many years. So both the newness of directing for film and then feeling so rusty as an actor, it was. It was a blast, but it was so nerve-wracking, you know, those different kind of skills. But yeah, I direct theater all over LA, and this is the first, um, my very first feature film. <laughs> nice uh, to be done. So, <laughs> we just got the stop sign here. I uh, wanted to thank our AV uh, techs in the back for running the show. Thank you so much for, for, for doing that, and for all your work for our film today. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this afternoon with us. This is the biggest afternoon of my life. <laughs> I, I just am so grateful. You have a lot going on here, and we really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you very much. And we want to say thank you too. So here's a certificate from the Independent Film Festival and Comic Con saying thank you for letting us show your film. Oh, oh thank you. This is the website for the film. Oh, great. That's um, what he told me about it. It's going to be available tonight. Awesome. Um, just yeah, out. We're going to be free. It's on Vimeo. It's on Vimeo. It's a rental. Oh, I see. A rental. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're yeah. making movies. Okay, cool. I'm also a filmmaker. I have that before. Working on getting my first film, my first feature done. Yeah. And, uh, so that's me. Wonderful. Yeah, if you have any questions about it, we just went through the whole two and a half year process of, of putting it all together. And, yeah. I heard, I heard first person yeah, camera, and I'm like, oh god, yeah. I don't know what You're this is. Yeah, yeah. I just caught the last five minutes. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, well, it's great to meet you. Yeah. If you want to go and chat about um, sure. filmmaking, I'm yeah. happy to help you. Are you local? Yeah, I'm yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Thanks. 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 He has to have cards. Annie, so um, you have you have a uh, name with the tag? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've been, you know, I left mine at the room. Yeah, that's fine. Mr. Brooks.